Hello all, welcome to this video on machine learning. Today I'll be talking about backpropagation algorithm. This algorithm is used to effectively train a neural network through a method called as chain rule. In simple terms, after each forward pass through a network, backpropagation performs a backward pass while adjusting the model's parameters which are weights and bias. Here I'll be using a four layer neural network consisting of four neurons for the input, four neurons for the hidden layers and one neuron for the output, which is shown in the figure here. The neurons which are colored in purple represent the input data. These can be as simple as scalars or more complex like vectors or multidimensional matrices. The first set of activations, A will be equal to the input values. Activation is the neuron's value after applying an activation function. The final values at hidden neurons which are colored in gray are computed using the weighted input in layer L and the activation in layer L. Computing this for layer 2 and 3, we get weighted input of layer 2 given as weight of layer 1 multiplied by the input plus bias in layer 1 and activation in layer 2 given as a function of weighted input of layer 2. Similarly for layer 3, weighted input of layer 3 given as weight of layer 2 multiplied by activation in layer 2 plus bias in layer 2. Activation in layer 3 is given as a function of weighted input of layer 3. Now the activations here are computed using the activation function f which is non-linear. For example sigmoid, rectified linear unit or tanh and it allows the network to learn complex patterns in data. When examining them carefully, we see that the subscripts are missing. The reason here is that we have combined all the parameter values in matrices which are grouped by layers. This is a standard way of working with neural networks. Let us pick a layer, let it be 2, and its parameters as an example. The same operation can be repeated on any layer in the network. W L is a weight matrix of shape n m where n is the number of output neurons that is neurons in the next layer and m is the number of input neurons that is neurons in the previous layer. For this case n is 2 and m is 4. Now looking into these weights this is the weight when the index of output neuron is 1 and input neuron is 1. This is the weight when the Output neuron is of index 1 and input neuron is of index 2. The same is repeated for the index of neuron 2. X is the input vector of shape M1 where M is the number of input neurons which is 4. And we have bias which is of shape N, 1 where N is the number of neurons in the current layer which is 2. Now we need to calculate the equation for weighted input of layer 2. We see that this value of obtained by multiplying the weight matrix we saw before and the input and adding the bias to it. Now when we look into the neural network illustration here, we see that weighted input of layer 2 is expressed using z1 of layer 2 and z2 of layer 2 which are the sums of multiplication between every input xi with the corresponding weight wij of layer L. This is the same as this result. Now coming to the final part of the neural network which is the output layer which produces the predicted value. It is represented as a single neuron which is colored in blue and evaluated as s is equal to weight of layer 3 multiplied by activation in layer 3. This can be simplified using matrix representation. Now all the equations we saw till now, they form the network's forward propagation. Now when we look into it, we see that x is equal to activation in layer 1 which is the input layer. Weighted input of layer 2 is equal to weight of layer 1 multiplied by input plus bias of layer 1 which is the neuron value at hidden layer 1. Activation in layer 2 is equal to function of weighted input of layer 2 which is activation value in hidden layer 1. Then we have weighted input of layer 3 given as weight of layer 2 multiplied by activation in layer 2 plus bias of layer 2 which is the neuron value at hidden layer 2. 
and activation in layer 3 is given as a function of weighted input of layer 3 which is activation value at hidden layer 2 and as we saw previously s is equal to weight of layer 3 multiplied by activation in layer 3. The final step here is to evaluate the predicted output s against an expected output y. Output y is part of a training data set x, y where x is the input. Evaluation between s and y happens through a cost function which can be as simple as a mean square error or more complex like a cross entropy. We name this cost function as c and denote it as c is equal to cost of s, y. Now based on c's value the model knows how much to adjust its parameters in order to get closer to the expected output y. This happens using the backpropagation algorithm. Backpropagation aims to minimize the cost of function by adjusting the network's weights and bias. The level of adjustment is determined by the gradients of the cost function with respect to those parameters. Now gradient of a function c, x1, x2, xm in point x is a vector of the partial derivative of c in x which is given by this representation. The derivative of a function c measures the sensitivity to change of the function value which is output with respect to a change in its arguments which is input. In other words, it tells us the direction c is going. Now gradient shows how much the parameter x needs to change either in positive or negative direction to minimize c. Now computing gradients is done through a technique which is called as chain rule. Now calculating this for a single weight wjk of layer l gradient is computed using the chain rule so we will add an extra term which is dou zj of layer l in the numerator and denominator now expanding this we get sigma k is equal to 1 to m wjk of layer l multiplied by ak of layer l minus 1 plus bj of layer l where m is the number of neurons in the l minus 1 layer and on differentiating this term, we get it as ak of l minus 1. Substituting it here, we get dou c by dou zj of layer l multiplied by ak of layer l minus 1. The same can be calculated for bias bj of layer l. We insert an extra term dou zj of layer l in the numerator and denominator and we differentiate this. The value is 1. On substitution, we get it as dou c by dou zj of layer l. Now, the common term here, dou c by dou zj of l, is called the local gradient, which can be easily determined using the chain rule. Gradients allow us to optimize a model's parameters. Now, this is an algorithm for doing the same. Here, we see that until the termination condition is not met, we are updating the values of w and b as w modified as w minus epsilon dou c by dou w where epsilon is the learning rate and b as b minus epsilon dou c by dou b. Here the initial values of w and b are randomly chosen. Epsilon determines the gradient's influence. w and b are matrix representation of the weights and bias. Derivative of C in W or B can be calculated using partial derivatives of C in the individual weights or bias and termination condition is met once the cost function is minimized. Now let us zoom into the bottom part of the neural network we saw before. Here we see that the weight W22 of layer 2 connects the activation A2 of layer 2 and the weighted input z2 of layer 2. So, computing the gradient, we can use the chain rule to calculate it through weighted input z2 of layer 3 and a2 of layer 3. Now, expanding this, we will insert the term dou z2 of layer 3 in the numerator and denominator. Now, expanding this term in the numerator and instead we substitute the term dou a2 of layer 3 in the numerator and denominator and multiplied by a2 of layer 2 we get dou c by dou a2 of layer 3 multiplied by f dash of z2 of layer 3 
multiplied by a2 of layer 2. Now calculating the final value of derivative of c in a2 of layer 3 will require the knowledge of the function c. Since c is dependent on a2 of layer 3, calculating the derivative is a straightforward process. Now we will see a practical example of how backpropagation works. Now here we have a data set which has labels which is given in this table where we have the input and the desired output. Now we will plot the output of the model when the value of w is 3 which is given here. The model output when w is 3, desired output and the input. Now notice the difference between the actual output and the desired output. We see there is a difference. So we try to change the value of w and we give the value of w as 4. Before that we will calculate the absolute error and square error for this difference. Same is repeated for 4. Again we see that the error is increasing and increasing the value of w is not helping anymore. So now what we do is we will try reducing the value of w and on doing that that is when w is 2 we see that the square error is 0. Now what we did here is we first initialized some random value to w and propagated forward then we noticed that there is some error. To reduce that error we propagated the backward direction and increase the value of w. After that also we notice the error has increased so we came to know that we can't increase w. So we propagated backward and we decrease the value of w. Now we see that the error has reduced. Note that here w is the parameter value we are choosing. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.